We all have our own idea of our dream home. But the reality is many of us have to put up with houses that just don't work. The kids are living on top of each other. There isn't enough space to do all the things they'd like to do. By the time you've opened this cupboard and this drawer, you can't move and nobody can come in. But it is possible to get more house for less money. Transforming a house into something spectacular might seem unaffordable, but I really believe it is possible to create your dream home for a fraction of the price of going and buying one if you get it right. Oh, wow, that looks really smart. Last year saw a whopping 164,000 home extensions successfully granted planning permission. But get it wrong and a badly designed extension can knock thousands off the value of a house. It's slightly nerve-wracking because this is our house which could crumble at any moment. We might be creating a monster. In this series, I'll be following the fortunes of those attempting to radically overhaul smaller homes for a fraction of the cost of buying a bigger one. The headboard of the bed is going to be this far away from someone else <laughs> on the loo. Too close to comfort. It's never a simple undertaking. That's a mission you've set yourself. It is a mission, yeah. yeah. To me, oh, with my bad UCSE maths, yeah. it's four metres. This yeah. is going to be a bumpy <laughs> ride, isn't it? If I have to brush my teeth in a little small bucket, it's been held. But the rewards can be immense. Goodness me, how utterly fabulous. Don't really need the rest of the house. It's got everything we need just in this one spot. Recent research has shown that homes in Britain are among the smallest in Western Europe, with new houses sometimes being as small as 76 square metres. But if you need somewhere to live and just can't afford to get somewhere that's big enough, don't despair, because you may find you can get somewhere that's really quite tiny and turn it into something fabulous. This week I'm with families who are hoping to save cash by doubling their space for a fraction of what it would cost to buy their unaffordable dream home. In Maidstone... <laughs> How you doing? Ben and Eloise want to extend the living space in their cramped 1960s detached home. I probably am taking on too much, but we need as much space as we can get. It's going to be pretty painful. But first, I'm off to Ascot in Berkshire, where Helena and Andy are planning to totally transform their house. If I just take pictures of the room so yeah. I can show Dad. Helena and Andy have just got engaged. Four months ago, they invested in this £278,000 1950s semi as their first home buying it Greek style. My dad has definitely kept it traditional and yes. has helped us buy a house. In Greek culture, when people are getting married, the dad will present the daughter with a house or with a large contribution of money to buy a house. Thank you. But they're taking Greek tradition a big step further. Helena's mum and dad are moving in with them. Paris, Helena's dad. He likes to have his Greek TV, so we're making a separate room, especially for his Greek TV. Oh, wow. It's a bit like my Big Fat Greek Wedding, like he misses home, so he watches his TV. Just hoping that my parents and I can come to a compromise on design yeah. and layout and, and the look of the house, because our tastes are quite different. What do you think of that one? You like gloves? No, I love that table. I hate it. Some people might think that it's a bit strange, poor Andy having to live with his in-laws, but, I mean, we would have never been able to get on a property no. ladder without my family. Living with several generations under one roof doesn't have to be seen as a bad thing. There are major advantages, both financially and socially, but if you don't plan it right and you don't get the space to work in the right way, it can be living in hell. Building extension is the only way this family can get the space they need thanks to Ascot's crazy property prices. Hi, I'm Hi. Sarah. Hi, Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you doing, Andy? Hi, nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Helena and Andy have brought me to their ideal Ascot home, if they had the cash. So this is the sort of house, in terms of scale and size, that you'd really like to be yeah. able to afford? It's a very big house and there's a lot of space. 
you know, we'd be able to fit four people in. Lots of different like reception rooms. So if one person wants to watch TV quietly and other people want to have a chat around the, mm. around the table or watch a different programme, then there's all that space there, which is kind of what we need. This house would be worth about 800,000 and your house is worth about 300,000. Definitely <laughs> out of the budget there. <laughs> but you have got some money, haven't you? Yeah, we've got about 120 from the bank of mum and dad. So that's 420,000, which is a long way short of being able to buy an 800,000 pound house. Yeah. True. It is. It is. But despite the gap in their finances, Helena and Andy still aspire to all this house has to offer. To buy their dream house would cost £800,000. Their house is worth £300,000, so they'd need to find an extra £500,000. But they only have £120,000. Helena's parents are paying for this ambitious build, so I'd like to really check out the potential of their 1950s semi. What's really exciting about this house is it's one of the only houses left that hasn't been extended and it's also the worst house on the street. It's a really good way of adding value to your home because get rid of the worst house on the street and the whole street goes up in value. The outdated layout makes it tough to squeeze in two generations. Downstairs there's a large reception room with a kitchen, loo and garage. Upstairs, three bedrooms, but only one bathroom. Hello, hi. hi. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Hello. Hello. And so how did you decide to all live together? Yeah, I think it's really important to look after your family. I mean, I think it's a genius plan. Everyone can be a winner. Mm. But some people would think, gosh, that's a, that's a very brave thing. And maybe you're mad. Maybe you two are mad. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's actually a lovely big sitting room and it's lovely and light. Mm. So why does this space not work for you at the moment, do you think? Well, could you imagine living here with all four of us? We'd have to eat in here, uh, watch TV in here, and we've all got different tastes of TV shows. I could see that causing friction. Well, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> a few arguments. Next door, they're planning to replace the pokey kitchen with one big enough for their Greek family get-togethers. But it's upstairs that I fear might cause family clashes. Do you think having a bedroom slap bang next to your parents is going to be tricky or not? There'll be two bathrooms and wall space between us. But you know, when you come out of your bedrooms in the morning, you're going to be bumping into each other. Is that going to be fine? It's nothing major that's going to cause problems, to be honest. Over the next six months, the family want to completely transform their house with a two-storey wraparound extension. Downstairs, their idea is to extend into the back garden to create a huge open-plan kitchen, diner, family space beside a separate reception room. Upstairs, they're adding two new master bedrooms with en-suites. Helena and Andy are paying the mortgage but it's Paris and Zanette who are funding the £120,000 build from savings and a £25,000 loan. But I'm a little bit worried their planned layout could easily spark some family fireworks. I think the most important thing for generations all living in one space is that you have as many reception spaces as possible yeah. so that you can be on your own. And here you've got this big reception room and actually I think it would be better at this point here and at this point here... Two sets of doors. Have oh, two no. sets of doors mm. so you can have it all open or you can shut it off and you can be in individual silent mm. rooms. But I wonder if putting master bedrooms right next to each other is that wise. They are very much next door to each other. You're going to be facing each other straight yeah, yeah, on yeah. first thing in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel the awkward? I have issues about the bathrooms being side by side. I can understand your concern about it, because you're going to no, hear no, every something. single flush of the lavatory oh. and everything else. A solution could be to move one of the master bedrooms plus en suite to the other side of the house to maximise privacy. So who's project managing this? I am. So you're in charge yes. to get it finished? Yes, yes. I make sure that's everything correct. In a house I can have an engagement party in by the time that it needs to be finished, thanks. Yes. <laughs> it seems Paris needs to step up to the mark. I'm not too fussed about being next door no. to him. I mean, otherwise, He's why are we having line. it as one house? We might as well then have split it off, had two separate entrance doors and name it what it is, two maisonettes or whatever. But no, we want to live as, as a family. 
I think there may be some clashes along the way. Although it is a strong family unit, this is going to be a rock and roll ride. While the Iowa Nidases mull over their plans, I'm off to Maidstone to meet another growing family. Ben and Eloise need more living space, and fast. I've only got a few days left until my due date, so I could go any day now, <laughs> which is really scary. Salesman Ben works full-time in London and runs his own part-time web business from home. As well as a new baby on the way, he's piling on the pressure by project managing the build himself. So that goes like that. But I probably am taking on too much, but we kind of need the extra space for the baby. I've got a daughter from a previous relationship who comes to stay every other weekend. So we need as much space as we can get, really. Because the baby is going to be along literally as we start the build, I just think trying to look after my first newborn baby with all of that going on will be a bit stressful. It's going to be worth it, but it's going to be pretty painful. Two of the most stressful things that people do in their lives are have children and do building work, so it's madness that they end up doing them at the same time. Ben and Eloise live in a standard boxy 1960s detached home that's seen better days. Downstairs, there's a living room, dining room, kitchen, loo and garage. Upstairs, three bedrooms and a bathroom. This sort of 1960s architecture just isn't very fashionable yet, and I'm not sure it ever really will be, so it will always tend to hold the value of the property down. As you can see, in other houses in the street, they have done the facade, which can take them into a different league of home. So it seems a bit of a waste to do loads of stuff to the inside of this house and not transform the outside too. To buy a house in this area with the space they'd like would cost a hefty half a million pounds. Ben and Eloise's house is worth about 280,000, so they'd need to find an extra 220,000 pounds. Trouble is, they only have 30,000. Hi, hello, how are you? Oh, oh exciting. <laughs> gosh, so you're hanging in there? Yeah, due about. tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, gosh. Well, we'll have to talk quickly, quick, quick. <laughs> What was the dining room is now an office for Ben's part-time cartoon business. So you work full-time yeah. and you have a caricature website, which yeah. is pretty busy as well. I'm pretty much a workaholic. I drop him off at the train station at 7am. He'll get back at 7pm, come home, and he'll be doing stuff on his laptop all night. I can't get away from it. It's just here. I see the computer. I'm just like, I can check me. So you really need a separate office Definitely. where you go to the office and mm. then you shut the door and you leave the office and yeah. that's yeah. work done. Yeah. Their plan is to demolish the garage and build a two-storey side extension. Downstairs, they're adding a playroom with a new shower room and making their kitchen twice the size. But I fear there may be an issue with their layout they haven't noticed yet. Downstairs, there's a kind of hole in your plans and that's there's nowhere to put your buggies and coats and wellies and mm. all of that stuff. Yeah. You'll end up with a hallway that you can't get through and then a shower that's never used. The flip side of losing your garage is losing storage space. One solution here is to replace the shower room with a utility room with storage. You want a downstairs loo because yeah. that's really useful, but you're better off with a big utility space, I yeah. think. Upstairs, they're creating a new master bedroom, bathroom and back bedroom. Ben has never project managed a build before. Along with overseeing the schedule and contractors, he'll have to watch every penny of their tiny budget. And you have got quite a limited budget yeah, here, haven't you? 30,000. That is quite tight, isn't it? Yeah, it's very tight. It's going to be tricky, I know that, but I'm going to sort of use my negotiation skills. So you're going to be king of the blaggers? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. The best advice that we got today, I think, is uh, the shower room for the downstairs. We don't really need a shower that badly. It'll be good storage space, which I was worrying about. Took the project on, so um, I've got to just crack on with it, I guess. There's no sort of nothing else I can do, really. 
This is already a really manic household. There's a baby on the way. Ben is a self-confessed workaholic. He works full time and he has his own business as well. But on top of all of that, they're about to start a really big building project with a really small budget of only £30,000. This is going to be a very stressful time. I'm with two families who are aiming to radically transform their living space without breaking the bank. In Ascot, Helena and Andy may be paying the mortgage, but it's Paris and Zanette who are spending 120,000 on this build so they can all live together. Yes, it's going. It's <laughs> <laughs> just crazy, isn't it? Greek dad Paris is in charge of the budget as project manager. He's overseen a build before in Greece, but daughter Helena looks like she might be as particular as any client. Dad, that's actually a lot smaller than we thought it would be. No, it's not smaller. No, it's it's no, no. It is. Although this is probably a big space for most people, and it is a big space, but just to look at it and think, oh, hold on, this is my kitchen, my dining area and my lounge area, it doesn't feel that big. Over in Maidstone, Ben's also project managing his extension build for his growing family. But unlike Paris, he's never done anything like this before. I probably am taking on too much. Yeah, it's, it's fairly scary, you know. This is a big project for a first-timer. Downstairs, they're adding a playroom, plus a new shower room, and making their kitchen twice the size. Upstairs, they're creating a new master bedroom, bathroom, and back bedroom. But before the foundations are even dug, a different sort of labour is underway. Six in the morning, Eloise has gone into labour. They need to change the bath and set now. Okay. A few hours later, there's a brand new Barrett. Baby Isabella Barrett, born today at 2 p.m. Welcome to the world, Isabella. Ben and Eloise now have a new baby and an extension to worry about. There's no paternity leave from this build. I'm excited. I haven't had a lot of sleep, obviously, with the baby and everything, but there's no turning back, really, so it's going to be um, three, four months of uh, chaos. With a tiny budget of just £30,000, Ben is relying on his gift of the gab to cut costs. On any build, everything is negotiable, and there are always deals to be done. Ben's doing well, bartering a deal with his builders. Ben's going to do us a website. It cuts the cost down on his labour charge. First, I thought the budget was unrealistic and I was really concerned. The amount of work that's got to go into this build. He, he wouldn't be doing this build today without the deals that he's actually struck. So, um, yeah, well done, Ben. Back in Ascot, project manager Paris and daughter Helena still don't see eye to eye over their layout. If I don't like the size, is there room for changing it? No. Why? Because the council, he wants to No, no, to not, not the width. Meters. What? The length. So if I want the room, if I decide I want a smaller bathroom, oh, no but problem, a bigger no problem. Office, that doesn't matter, no, does no, it? No, this is uh, up, to, up to me and to the builder. And Discuss. me, mum and Andy. Yeah. The family are spending £120,000 to supersize their 1950s semi. Downstairs, the rear extension will create a huge open plan kitchen diner family space. Upstairs, they're adding two new master bedrooms with en suites. It's great because things are really starting to take shape. I'm back hoping to help this feisty family visualise their finished build with an augmented reality app that will bring their plans to life and highlight any possible problems. This is what your room is going to look like with your current plans. Oh, wow. Yeah. The bit that worries me is the wall between the old sitting room and the new family kitchen area. I look at this and think it's going to be pretty dark. You don't actually see it on the screen like that. It's so clear. Yeah. It's mm. just going to be a very dark little box. But there is a potential easy fix to bring in lots of light and give privacy. What I'm suggesting is that you don't block up the double doors down there. In fact, you put more in here so there's two pairs of doors. 
Yeah. Wow. What's an idea? You can shut these doors, but if you want to, you can open it up and you can bring the light of the garden all the way through the house. Mm -hmm. Our problem is, if we are watching TV next door to each other, how would we block the sound out if they're glass doors? You can have soundproof doors. Great, it seems they all agree about installing glass doors for the living room. But within hours, family harmony vanishes. That's four metres! Yeah, it's four metres. not it two metres, it's, it's four, four. metres! It? Helena and Dad Paris disagree about the size of the doors for the kitchen. Oh, my God, it's a, a metre a door. You're crazy, a metre a door. I've never seen in my life a metre a door. It's a bifold door. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I, don't I can't. Know. I don't, I, I'm, I, I'm going to lose my temper. I, that is not right, Dad. I do. It's not big enough. It's not big enough. The plans have bifold doors that are four metres wide, but project manager Dad has only built a two metre gap. There might be trouble ahead. On this drawing, yeah. a centimetre represents yeah. a metre. So if it's four centimetres in length, to me, with my bad UCSE maths, yeah. it's four metres. You've just told me this is two metres. So I was right. Hold on, was no, I no, right? No, it's not. He doesn't like bifold doors. So it's when I'm not here and I'm at work, there's nothing I can do, can I? It's done now. One, one moment, because I'm going to lose my temper now. You're not listening to me. I don't believe it. It should be about just, three. Just, just, I don't... Take a breath, take a breath. Ooh, it seems tempers are running high in this family and they haven't even moved in together yet. What's a bifold door, Dad? Yeah, but listen to me. I don't want a French door, like, yeah. what's there? Yeah. Paris and Zanette are paying for this £120,000 build, but daughter Helena, who will be paying the mortgage, is set on getting the house she wants. Helena is very inflexible. She is either black or white. There's no shades of grey. If it's two metres, you can make 50 centimetres each door. It can be four doors. Listen to me. Can I say something yeah. to you? If you don't get this right with Helena, everything is going to be very sour. If you can adjust this and make her happy with it, she'll be more tolerant for some of the other things you, you thing, want to, thing, to do. I'm on my way back to Maidstone, a month into bartering Ben's four-month build. Ben and Eloise have a tiny baby, but an even tinier £30,000 budget. And first-time project manager Ben is finding it tough going. When I look around the site, I can see that there is an element of chaos everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, just three or four hours tidying up the site would make a big difference, because at the moment you've got half the building sites inside, half your home stuff's outside, mm. it's all just muddle up in one great big heap. Yeah, it's driving us crazy at the moment. It makes it feel worse than it is. There are ways of keeping things tidy and dust-free without shelling out for storage fees. Package up all your belongings and put them into one space upstairs. Tape up the door so that the dust doesn't get in as easily. Almost like a storage unit. In the garden, it's good to see Ben is putting some distance between his office and his house. With two jobs and project managing this build, he really needs a separate space to work. So this is the garden office? Yes. Brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh. When extending your home isn't an option, but you're desperate for extra space, a garden room could be a perfect solution. Off-the-peg modular designs cost anything from between £3,000 and £40,000. For bespoke models, the sky's the limit. Aside from offices, uses include playrooms, yoga studios, home cinemas and gyms. And you don't usually need planning permission, as long as it isn't used as a bedroom and the space is less than 15 square metres and 2.5 metres high. For more information about extending your house or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. In Ascot, the Ioannidis family are two months into their six-month build, and so time to check on progress. Gosh, this is getting on brilliantly. Their open-plan kitchen diner family space is really taking shape, despite their little fallouts. 
Now, I know there's been a little bit of disagreement, hasn't there, about the doors here. What exactly has gone on? When I last came here to have a look, they were too small, they were almost like patio, like French doors, so I lost my temper. In the end, we've actually made them bigger, so... We're all learning to compromise. Yes, Helena? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there might be another place their design could be improved. You haven't got any roof light up there. It's a flat roof and there's no roof lights. Right. Yeah, I think you'll find... Not only does it make this area dark, but it makes the original house, the sitting room in there, yep. quite dark mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So if you look at how it is now, and then hang on and wait for me to do this. And here's what a difference a roof light could make. Do you see how much difference that makes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be much lighter, wouldn't it? I'd make it good and big and keep it that end. Well, we need to think about doing that as well, then, don't we? I think so. Yeah. In the old kitchen, they've hit another problem. Now, this area here, you've dug all the floor out. So what happened? Our builder found that the house had been built on cement. There's nothing to stop damp coming up. OK. And so he said it had to all be dug out. To be honest, having a solid floor that has no damp-proof membrane well, a... is a disaster. Well, so he's, he's just... absolutely right. right. And so... you were right to allow him to go ahead with that, oh, but yeah. it obviously has come at a cost. And it's a big cost of £7,000. Paris and Zanette have no contingency fund. But £15,000 of their £120,000 budget is earmarked for fixtures and fittings. And this is where they'll need to claw back cash. If you can look at the budget and try and find a way yeah. of cutting costs, this is the time to do it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's you that's going to have to compromise more than anyone else, isn't it? There's a lot of extra costs that are coming up, and the problem with that is that the only solution is to rein back some of the spending from elsewhere. I'm not sure that compromise on finish is something that Helena's really going to be prepared to do. I'm with two families who are aiming to create the perfect multi-generational homes without breaking the bank. In Maidstone, new dad Ben is doing a great job making deals to keep his 30 grand build on budget. Would you be open to the idea of doing a, a, a deal? The answer would be yes. He's talked his way into a cut price kitchen by offering to print the showroom's brochures at discount. Full marks to Ben. But whilst busy inside, they mustn't forget the outside of their house. When you look down the street, it's very clear which are the smarter houses and which are the less smart mm. houses. And you want to make sure that your house enters the yeah, smarter house uh, sort of section of the street. Cladding is a great way to smarten up your home. Timber costs around £25 per square metre with UPVC as a budget option at around £15. As well as cladding, they'll ideally need to make the bricks of the extension the same colour as the original house, or there's a danger it will look tacked on. It would cost you about £100 to buy enough dye to do all of the new wow. extension. It takes about half an hour to dry, and okay. in that half-hour process, it lightens. So, as you can see, the original brick is this bleached colour. These are your new bricks, and this is the colour you can end up with. Right, it's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we won't have any of those sort of obvious lines, it will sort of cover it up and... Yeah, you blend the old and the new together perfectly. For more information about extending your house or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. Ben is on a massively steep learning curve as a first-time project manager and is now making some debatable decisions. Well, I've ripped out the kitchen. I went a bit gung-ho and just done it in a day. Just thought it'd be a good idea, but realised afterwards that I've got no water, I've had water leaks, it's been hell. Brushing my teeth, I have to brush my teeth in a little small bucket. Before I go to work, I'm up at sort of 5.30 in the morning washing in a bucket which is um, it's pretty grim. 
and it seems the keeping the site organised bit didn't go down so well. There is mess everywhere, it's just chaos. The builders and the trades who are in at the moment, they're not happy with the mess. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a nightmare. Even I'm starting to come to the end of me tether now, I must admit. It is what it is, I guess. I've just got to put my head down and crack on with it. In Ascot, the bank of mum and dad is in crisis too. Build costs are rising, but Paris and Zanette don't have a penny more than their £120,000 budget. The money is going out regularly from the banks. We just hope that the money lasts so we can carry on paying. <laughs> When a budget spirals out of control, one surefire way to rein in your spending is on fixtures and fittings. One of the key issues now is saving money because you've had extra expenses you weren't expecting and if you can compromise on price on the kitchen, that is a key area you could claw back a lot of the overspend that you've already had. This kitchen here would be about £10,000. So that's a bit more on the budget range, isn't it? And look at, look at your father's smile. He's like, oh, that's perfect. I really don't like it. Paris and Zanette may be funding this build, but daughter Helena doesn't seem a fan of compromise, even if it helps save her parents' cash. What do you think, Paris? Price is right. Price is right. <laughs> For me, it's price. In Britain, there's a temptation to spend an awful lot of money on our kitchens. But you can bag a real bargain if you shop around for ex showroom or end of line. And check out suppliers of second hand bespoke kitchens. To make a cheap kitchen look expensive, the key is to mix and match. Fork out on quality worktops, designer lighting, and stylish taps. But you could save cash on carcasses and doors. For this family, I think it's time to sit down, stay calm and talk money with project manager Paris. Do you have an idea as to how much you would like to spend on your kitchen? Well, my budget is £8,000. And the rest will be down to Helen if she wants to make up the difference and take on an extra debt. If £8,000 only got us a kitchen that couldn't be what I really wanted, I'd rather buy a more expensive kitchen that I would then pay off. Obviously, the attitude should be, I find a kitchen that I really like to the budget. Oh dear, we seem to have hit another family face-off. Seems to me there is a fundamental difference between each side of the table here, and that's you're thinking that you'd like to have it anyway, and you'll get it out with debt and pay it off in the long term, and you're thinking, well, if you can't afford it, don't buy it. That's the mentality my parents have always had. Unfortunately, I wish I did share it. I, I just... I'm quite an impatient person. There's a little bit of me that thinks you spent a whole lifetime saving mm -hmm. to make sure that you guys aren't in debt. So I think it's a little bit naughty for you to go into debt. I, I totally see where you're coming from and I totally understand. Getting into debt isn't the best way to deal with a budget overspend. Of course, I'd love to spend only eight grand. I wouldn't have to take any debt, but we would like to have what we want now. It's got to be a compromise, because we've only got a finite amount of money, and that's always been our ethos. We don't, we don't spend on things we can't afford. I don't really care what anyone else thinks. It's about making us happy. I think my mum and dad think it's about showing off, that I want a big, flashy kitchen so we can show off to my mates. I just want a big, flashy kitchen because I grew up with a really crap one, mm. and so did he. Whether the family can compromise and meet in the middle is anyone's guess. In Maidstone, it's taken four months for new parents Ben and Eloise to transform their home with a massive two-storey extension. But now all their hard work is almost finished. Ben and Eloise took an awful lot on. They had a new baby, a major build, and all for a budget of just £30,000. But I've got a feeling that Ben's gritty determination might have just pulled it off. Back then, the outside of their 1960s detached house was tired and dated. Well, that certainly now fits in as one of the smartest houses on the street. Cladding works, the bricks all matching. I think it's been there for years.
Now Ben and Eloise have supersized their cramped house into a smart, spacious family home. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Very well, thank you. This looks absolutely fantastic. Let me have a look inside. Before, their kitchen was so tiny, they struggled to both use it at the same time. But now they've massively increased its size by knocking through to the new side extension. So this looks absolutely amazing. And yeah. this is the kitchen that you were hoping for. Yeah. The dream kitchen. The kitchen before was so tiny. Mm. Definitely. We have no problems about bumping into each other. I yeah. can empty the dishwasher fine. <laughs> yeah, the space is huge now. I mean, it looks fantastic. This is unrecognisable. This used to be your office here, didn't it? That's right, well, yeah. yeah. The other end of the open plan was once their old dining room and makeshift office for Ben. But it's been transformed into a sleek new dining and sitting area. Everything was in here. You're all working in here all the time. Yeah. And now it's certainly not an office anymore, is it? Definitely not, no. no. Which must make such a difference. A massive difference. Yeah, it was horrendous. Ben and his piles of paperwork have now moved to slick new premises in the garden office. You can just leave the house to go to the office. Mm. It makes all the difference in yeah. all the world. Definitely. And Ben doesn't work as much. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So when he comes into the house, is he off duty? As much as he can be. Yeah. I mean... It takes, it takes key locks me out. <laughs> <laughs> Downstairs in the new extension, there's a brand new playroom next to a shower room, where they decided against having a practical utility room. Having lost the garage space, mm. you weren't tempted to have a utility room? You thought a shower room would be better? I think it was down to cost and everything, so we thought, you know, we'd just... Uh, have it built in with the kitchen. Built in with the kitchen, yeah. Upstairs, the side extension has given them two new bedrooms and a bathroom. Oh, a lovely bedroom and a lovely shower room as well. It certainly beats washing in a bucket. So this must be fantastic to have, because over the last few months, mm. Eloise, you've been at your mum's quite a lot, so Ben, you've been up here. Yeah. It must feel lovely to be back together amazing. again. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. Mm. Has it been quite a bumpy ride, do you think, along the way? Definitely. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> it feels like a massive weight off our shoulders, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just nice to be able to relax and not have sort of builders and chaos and open your eyes and see something that looks finished. And <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's amazing. Despite the challenges, Ben and Eloise have done an incredible job. The house looks fantastic. But did bartering Ben manage to stick to their budget? You set yourself this incredibly big challenge of trying to do all this for £30,000. Yeah. How much did you end up spending? Around 40000 So you did go over, but that is still incredible to do all of this for 40000 Yeah. If Ben and Eloise had tried to buy their dream home in this area, it would have been a whopping £500,000, £190,000 more than their budget. Instead, they managed to create their own dream house for £40,000. Even though they've overspent by £10,000, they've achieved an awful lot on not very much money. And there's more comforting news. The house was worth £280,000 when you bought it, and you end up spending £40,000 on it. Yeah. That's 320000 I think it would be quite realistic for you to get 425000 for it. Fantastic. Which would mean that you've created £105,000 of equity. It's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's a lot of money. We have our dream house now, and, yeah. and 100k equity, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. I have an awful lot of admiration for Ben and Eloise. They've worked really hard to try and achieve something, and they have achieved it, and they deserve it. It just goes to show that with enough hard work, anything is possible. Six months ago, Paris and Zanette, daughter Helena and fiancé Andy took on what might be considered a project of utter madness. Some people might think, poor Andy having to live with his in-laws, but I mean, we would have never been able to get on a property no. ladder without my family. 
With Helena and Andy paying the mortgage and her parents funding the £120,000 build, the family wanted to more than double the size of this house so they could all live together. Dad, that's actually a lot smaller than we thought it would be. No, it's not smaller. But sparks flew from the start between Helena and project manager Dad, Paris. That's four metres! Yeah, it's four metres. not two metres, it's, it's four, four. metres! Now this huge build is almost finished. And there should be enough space for two generations. <laughs> Helena and her family had a massive task. They took quite a small home and completely transformed it so that it would easily and comfortably fit two families living in it. But from day one, there has been a lot of arguing. And I'm just hoping that they've all learned to compromise. At the start of this build, their rundown 1950s semi looked very different. Now that certainly isn't the worst house in the street anymore. Amazing. Now they've created a spacious 21st century family home. Hi, hello, how are Hi, you? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. You too. What an amazing, unrecognisable space. You must be thrilled. Before, the main living space was an unloved shell, totally unsuited to multi-generational living. But they've transformed the ground floor with a rear extension and three reception rooms. Are you pleased with the divides? We're glad that we've done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the glass doors are a great success. Now each space can easily be closed off into a separate living area. I think these different spaces mm -hmm. will mean that you can all hopefully cohabitate <laughs> without any arguments. Mm. How do you imagine you're going to use these rooms? I thought the front room would be sort of like a more formal lounge and Mum might have that as somewhere she'd like to just sort of relax Thank and quite you. tranquil, elegant. And the middle room was going to be for, for Dad, so he could have like Greek TV, leather chairs. Amazing. Sort of relax, the new boys' room. Oh, yeah. I can see the football going Yeah, I'll have yeah. a sticker saying, no girls allowed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> A huge kitchen diner reception is in the rear extension, and the roof light brings the sitting area alive. It makes such a difference. It's really yeah. bright and light in here. I'm so glad we've got it. It's one of the best things we did. And this is a space that you two are thinking that you're going to use a lot, isn't it? This will be our area, won't it? So the bifold doors look amazing. But who can forget the family's little misunderstanding over the infamous four metres? There was a discussion about whether they should be bigger or By smaller. By far door gate, yeah. <laughs> it opens up there. And it just, yeah. I just well. love the fact that I can look out into that garden. So you're happy oh, with it? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you're happy right. that Helen's happy? And I'm happy that they're both happy. Mm -hmm. The rest of the open plan in the rear extension is the family's sleek new kitchen diner. Is this what you were dreaming of? I love it. Absolutely love it. Really? Yeah, it's amazing. It's clean, it's minimalist, it's got sparkle, it's white, it's bright. It was absolutely key getting the right kitchen in, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And it was another kind of slightly bumpy ride there. Yeah. Oh, and I think it's been easy in this, in this build. <laughs> The kitchen caused more family fireworks. So have they found a budget-friendly kitchen that Helena likes? And how much was the kitchen? It was originally 9,900 and we got it down to 5,500 by cutting out lots of sort of extras and not taking their appliances. We basically pared it right the way down. We've sourced all the electrical equipment separately. A gorgeous kitchen for under 10 grand. Upstairs, extending has given them two master bedrooms with en suites but they're sticking to the plan of keeping them side by side even after all their heated discussions. An amazing roller coaster ride you guys have been on. A lot of it revolved around you, because you're a very hard lady to please. I know. It's 
when you set out on this in the first place, the house was worth about £300,000 and you had £120,000 you were going to spend on it. Did you spend that amount or did you spend Yeah, we more? spent £14,500 extra. Parents Paris and Zanette have spent all their savings and more. You had a £25,000 loan, which was part of that £120,000, yeah. and it's gone another nearly £15,000 over, so yeah. now it's a £40,000 debt. Yes, it's £40,000. It's £40,000, yeah. right. Yeah. OK. Their dream house was worth £800,000, so they would have needed another £380,000 to buy it. But they've managed to create their own dream house for £135,000. Even though they've overspent by 15000 that's less than half the money. And there's more reassuring news. I think now what you've created would be worth somewhere up to about 550000 So actually, you've created a really big lump of equity of £115,000. What does that feel like? I feel feels amazing. <laughs> At the age of 27, I think... Thanks to my parents, we've uh, achieved something that a lot of people will never achieve, so we're really, really thankful. I wait for a long time for the compliment. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Yamas. Yeah. Yamas. Yeah. Yeah. Despite all the hard-fought compromises and sacrifices and overspends and turmoil times and clashes of opinion, this family have ended up with a beautiful home. And hopefully that will be something that both generations and perhaps a third will be able to enjoy in years to come. Next time, Joe and Greg's on Sweet Design dies a quick death. You've got something about the same size as a small coffin <laughs> to have as your shower. Ridiculous, really, isn't it? And there's a watery surprise beneath the Ridley's old cottage. First time I've heard of a house being built across a well. I knew there was going to be some problems, but I just didn't quite um, know there were going to be really? like a hole in the ground. 